All right. I am glad to see you guys. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, let's say a prayer, and then we'll get started with your journal and the homework and the tests that you have that I'm going to collect. All right? So let's pray. Father, we're very thankful for this day, for the rain you gave us, and we're thankful for this place that we can have class. We're thankful for our healthy minds that are a gift from you. I pray that you would bless our time together. Would you please just bless the students during this class, help them to learn something new, and help me to teach well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's hit it. All right, so there's a couple of things I'm coming around for. So I'm looking at lesson 12, and I will collect test one. Um, a couple of you sent me your paragraphs, which is completely fine. You did not have to do that. Um, I can collect them in class. So I will check lesson 12. It's on page 73. If you could please turn to page 73. And then just have your test out. I'll collect that as I come around. Uh, your journal on the same page, please don't use another sheet of paper, on the same page as last week, describe your favorite dessert without naming it. As long as it's in the text, you can do that. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll take up number 12. So if you had number 9 from last week, you would have gone first. You would go up first. Let's see if there's another one. Okay. It is direction from the hand. Press the hand off to extend the last loop. Yep. Thank you. One hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Are you checking these? Is mom checking these? Good. Okay. One hundred dollars. Good. Now I have homework. Thank you for all the homework. All right. 
just another minute or two to finish your journal. Your favorite dessert without naming it. Okay, if you're finished and you would want to volunteer to read what you have, we'll see if we can guess what dessert you are describing. If you're not done, you have about another minute. Jacob, you can start. If you're not done, you've got about one minute to finish, and then we are on to what we're, what's happening today. Jacob, let's see if we can guess what your favorite dessert is. Okay, so my favorite dessert is Italian. It has, it kind of has a coffee flavor to it. It's really light. Has meringue in it and chocolate. Any guesses? Just call it out. Any guesses? Is it Tierra Masu? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Very good. Now I want some. Good. AC, read us yours. Thank you for volunteering. It's chocolate and vanilla, hot and cold. One's in the oven and one's in the freezer. You can eat them together. Uh, <laughs> Terrific. Um, you can eat it with a spoon or a fork, but I'm not going to be able to eat it straight through the skin. So my dad eats it with a fork. Because he's kind of a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yes. Ice cream and brownies. Very good. Love it. Anyone else? Laura, thank you. The chocolate swirls of creaminess usually found in fridges. Various toppings, including Oreo Reese's and mint chips, are definitely a must-have in my house. Any guesses? Is it some kind of cookie? Ice cream. Yeah. Ice cream. Just regular ice cream. Very good. Mint chocolate chip is my favorite. Yeah. Very good. Now we're all hungry for dessert. Yeah, thanks, Mrs. Meese. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Josh, thank you. I don't know if this is my favorite, but... It's made out of cereal, it's crispy and sweet, and you can make it on your own. Rice Krispie Treats? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, very good. Awesome. Have any of you ever made them before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, last call. Anyone else? Okay. So if you will get out a clean sheet and notebook paper, we're going to get set up for the vocab quiz. And this is what we're doing today. So we just checked off number one. We're going to do vocab quiz number four. You're going to get that set up. All right, we're going to do a quick grammar review of last week's grammar, 10, 11, and 12. Then we're going to jump right into this week's grammar, 13, 14, and 15. You'll get a break. And then we'll talk about your writing assignment. We're going to combine illusions, which we talked about last week, with theme. And we're going to talk about that with the gift of the Magi. Are any of you familiar with that short story, the gift of the Magi? Okay, we're going to talk about that. All right, so here you go for the vocab quiz. Go ahead and the same drill that we've done before. You'll copy what's in red. I forgot to add the letters. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Let me just move this. Okay. All right, so copy this in, and I'll show you the definitions in just a moment.
Don't forget the blue letters kind of down the middle. That way you can do a matching. All right, and here we go. When you're all done, I'll take it. And then grammar page 58 is where you need to go. Grammar page 58. Seconds. I need all, all papers. More homework for me. I get homework this week too. Grammar page 58. You should have a pencil handy. You'll need your highlighters. We're going to do a review first and then we'll jump into the lessons for this week. Got a couple of videos to show you today. They're fun. I can't get one of them out of my head. So I'll do that to you as well. All right, so let's start off with the review. We're on page 58. All right, so let's start off. This was irregular plural nouns. So these were nouns that when you make them plural, plural means what? More than, one. more than one. All right. So when you're talking about more than one of them, sometimes you can add an S. Sometimes you've got to do more than just that. All right. So let's review that. Uh, we'll start with Isaac up here, number one. We'll just go down the row. Uh, you just tell us what the plural is for that word. Plural, make it more than one. Okay. All right, all you have to add is S to that, right? Laura, number two. Preposition? Uh-huh, what do you add? Um, it's yeah. not just an S on that, right? Yes. Yeah. E-S, correct. Number three, Rose? Ages. What do you add? Yes. Yeah. E-S on that. Laura, Fox. That's an ES, right, good. All right, to Andrew, number five. Letter T, just an S. Just an S, good. Josh? Just days, birthdays. What do you add? S. Just an S on birthdays, that's right. All right, Zoe. Four and one S. Just one S is all you need. All right, we'll go to Caitlin. Message, ES. ES on that one, AC? Just an S on guys. And Jacob? All it is. Just an, S. just an S on that. Back to Isaac, number 11. Flies. Flies. How do we make that plural? Yes. And you change the Y to what? I. I, and then you add ES. Yeah, so that one we had to 
To drop the Y, add the I, add ES. All right, number 12, Laura. Relayed. Just an S. Just an S. Right. If there is a vowel before that Y, measure the time, just add S. If there's a consonant, then you have to drop the Y, change it to I, add ES. Rose, number 13. Shelly's, and it's uh, Y to I, add ES. That's exactly right. It would be I, E, S, right. Laura, Mandy, Mandy an just an S with a person's name. All right, and the last one, do we go to Andrew? All right. If Penny is late, you change the Y to I and you add E. That's correct. All right, then we went to page 63. There were more irregular plural nouns because you can never have too many, right? These also, when you talk about more than one of them, they sometimes add an S. Sometimes you need to do more than that. Sometimes you have to change the whole word. Sometimes you didn't change the word at all. All right? That's grammar. It's unpredictable. So let's keep going on this. So we're up to Josh. All right, so number one. Just S on cliffs. That's right. Number two. Geese. Right. You changed the word there, right? Okay. Number three to Caitlin. Sopranos. Just an S. Just S. That's right. If it's a musical term, most of the time just add S. Like soprano. Those are the people that sing really, really high. The, the ladies that sing super high. They can break glass with their high singing. All right. Just S on that. Right. Number four. Um, sisters in law. Oh. Right. And it's. Sisters is the word that we make plural there, right? Okay, number five to Jacob. Heroes have E-S, E-S on heroes there, right. All right, back to Isaac, number six. Child. No, it's not child. How would you make child plural if you're talking about a bunch of them? I hear it. Children. Yeah, we have to change the word on that one. Um, children. There we go. All right, Laura, seven. Alive. Tell us what we do. Uh, don't we change the word alive? L-I-V-E-S. L-I-V-E-S. So we have to change that F to a V and add E-S. You got it right. Rose. Number eight. Men. Men. You change the word. Yep. Laura, number nine. Oh, it's like the same thing, isn't it? Yep. It's a compound word. You change the Men. Yeah, not services, man. That doesn't make sense. Right. Right. That's terrific for him. All right. Andrew, number 10. Radios is just an S. Just S. Just S on radios. Number 11, Josh. Elves. Can you spell it for us? E L V E S. All right. So we change that F to a V E S. Number 12, Zoe. Mango. And I think you add an S. You can do either. Oh. Yeah, you can add S, and mango, actually, you could add the ES, it would be okay. Because grammar is fun and unpredictable. So you would have been right no matter what you said. All right, to Caitlin. Answer, just an S. Just S. All you have to add is S. And then AC. The mice. The mice is right. And Jacob, last one. Uh, yeah. ES on the potatoes. There you go. Very good. All right, now lesson number 12. That was on page 70. All right, so we talked about the irregular verbs. Irregular verbs. All right, so you have nouns that can be irregular, and you have to do crazy things with the nouns. We have verbs that can also be irregular, all right? So we have three houses. We have the be house, the have house, and the do house. So back to Laura. Well, let's not do Laura because you, you were absent last week. Let's do Rose. Rose, what are the five verbs that live in that B house? Um, am, is, are, was, were. Am, is, are, was, and were. That is correct. So whenever you are doing the, um, if you're talking about, yeah, it can be singular or plural. All right, you would use am, is, are, was, were as the verb. You, you don't use be. You use a different word, am, is, are, was, and were. All right, what are the three verbs that live in the have house, Laura, M? Um, 
Has, has, has. Have, has, and have. Right. All right. And then the three verbs that live in the do house, Caitlin. Do, does, been. There they are. All right. And there we go. All right. So let's double check your table of contents. This is the same thing I showed you last week. Um, but we are going to do 13, 14, and 15 today. So that is a verb lesson. That's 13. That is a, it should be, oh, the prepositions should be pink. I'm sorry about that. Your lesson 14, it should be pink because it's prepositions. Prepositions and punctuation are pink, so you'll need to change that. Sorry about that. Lesson 14 is pink. And then lesson 15, more verbs. More verbs. So we're doing verbs, prepositions, and verbs today. All right. Table of contents look savvy. Here we go. Jumping in. All right. So on page 75, on page 75. So we're going to talk about four principal parts of verbs. Four principal parts of verbs. All right. And just, just look at me. I'll show you the notes in just a second. All right. So the first two principal parts, you can see them right here on the paper, they have to do with present tense. All right, so that's why I have the clock in the middle. It's happening present time, right now, all right? Um, present time, so that's one principal part of your verb, present time, okay? The second one uh, is, is like present tense. It's the present participle, all right? And this is action that is still going on. So it is like having a be verb. And who are the verbs that live in the be house? What are they? Everybody. All right. So it's one of those plus an ing verb because it is action that is um, still going on. It's still happening. It's got an ing. I am talking. That is happening right now. You are listening. That is happening right now. Okay? So present tense and present participle are kind of related to each other, just like the next two. I'll show you the notes in a second, I promise. The next two are also kind of related. So you have past tense. That's the third principal part of a verb, past tense. The clock, you notice, is... On the left side, that happened before, it's past. And you have past participle, okay? So this time we use the have house. Who are the three verbs that live in the have house? All right, so one of those plus a verb in ED. All right, so they're related. Here's the first two principal parts, present time, present participle. And then you have past. Past time, past participle. All right, let me show you the notes and you can get those down. You got your blue handy? Why are we using blue? All right, because we're talking about verbs, right. All right, let me get in. Good. I'm going to go to the website um, so that if you want... To know where information is that can help you with your homework, it's all in the homework folder for week five. All right, so the class notes are in here. The videos we're going to watch today, all of that is in here. Your homework assignment for writing is in here. It's all in here for you. All right, so let's look at these class notes. All right, so blue is ready to go. All right, so we're going to start off by highlighting the title, because we are talking about verbs, so that would be blue, all right? And then in the, of course, we have our two vocabulary words, lobby, census. You might want to highlight those, make sure that you don't um, forget to make sure you know the definitions for lobby and census for next week. All right, and there they are, the four principal parts of verbs, one, two, three, and four. You have the verb, present tense, the present participle, those two are kind of related. Then you have the past and the past participle. 
All right, and I, the first one I highlighted for you was present tense. I wrote in the word time just to remind you that tense also means time. All right. Okay, and then the present participle. Present participle. If you would like, you could draw a little house under that and put B. Draw a little house under present participle and put B. All right? It's one of those B verbs. There's five of them. There's five that live in this house. It's one of those plus the verb and an ing because it is still happening. It is present participle. One of these B verbs, the verb itself with an ing. And you see some examples there. We're going to do some examples together in a minute. All right, and then number three, past tense or time. With a regular verb, normally you form the past tense. You just add ed. That's all you need to do. And then the fourth principle, part of a verb, here it is, past participle. And underneath past participle, you can draw another little house and write have. All right, it's one of those have verbs, one of the three, plus the verb and the ed. All right, and there you go. It's as simple as that. The four principal parts of verbs. All right. Now, you'll notice on the bottom there, page 75, do you see how the past and the past participle, it's the same word. All we added was one of these. Lobbied, and what does it say? Have lobbied, it's the same word. Appeased, has appeased. Again, the same word. Averted, have averted. Same word, all right? Same past tense that you use for both of those. All right, sound good? All right, turn over, let's do some practice down here at the bottom. All right, bottom of page 76. So you've got five verbs. Do we want to look at, wait, hold on. Let's look at these up. Let's practice in the middle. Look at the middle first. All right, these are the answers already for you. All right, so you start off with the verb. That's present tense. That's the first principal part. The second is a B plus ING, so is petitioning. The third is past tense, add the ED. The fourth is the past tense with a have. All right, it's as simple as that. Those are those four, four, um, what are they, the four principal parts. I was like, it begins with a P, principal parts. All right, now do these five down here at the bottom. Bottom of page 76. You can look just right above to see, to help you as you're figuring out what it wants you to do. This part of grammar is very repetitive. That is good. That is easy. We know what, that, what it wants us to do. The present tense is already given to you. That's the verb. The verb itself, all by itself, that's present. I tell you what, once you get A, B, and C done, you can stop. I think we get the point. Just do A, B, and C and stop. Don't worry about D and E. Just 
Just do A, B, and C. Don't do D and E. All right, let's start over there on this side with Caitlin. So we're going to start with A. And you just, the present tense is already given. You don't have to give us that. And then you'll just start with a present participle, then we'll go to AC for past, then we'll go to Jacob for past participle. All right, so go, Caitlin, A. Very. Use a B. Oh, past. Um, has a, no. Use a B. Oh, B. Um, been voting? No. Mm -hmm. What are the five? Who, am I? Who are the verbs that live in there? Been voting. So I thought we'd just put the. So do you want to do both? So this for letter A. No, I'm glad this happened. I'm very glad this happened. So for A, what should the present participle be? Is voting. Yeah, is voting. Should be there. Okay, so that should be for the present participle. AC, past tense. So we're just voted. Voted. That's it. Right. Jacob, past participle. Has voted. Has voted. You've got to have one of these guys and the past. Voted. Right, so this would be has voted. Happened in the past. All right, so B, um, Zoe, register is already given. Tell us what the present participle is. Is registering. Is registering. Right, we've got a B verb with an ING on that verb. Is registering. Josh, past? Registered. Registered. And Andrew, past participle? Has registered. Has registered. A have with that same past tense, register. All right, Laura, we'll go to you. Impeach is the present that's given. What is the present participle? Is impeaching. Yes. Rose, what is the past tense? Impeached. Impeached. Good. And Laura, past participle? Has impeached. Has impeached. We have a have verb with that past tense. Good. Easy enough? All right, I know that you know that. I know that you know that. I'm sorry, when, when, I'm, when you're answering in front of folks, I know it, it, it throws me off too, so I'm sorry about that, Caitlin. But I know that you know. All right. All right, well, let's move on. If no questions, let's have some real fun now. That's what this is. This is real fun. Real fun, people. This is it. You're looking at it. In case you didn't know, this is real fun. All right, let me go back. Prepositions, we're in pink. Pink, pink, pink. Pink, pink, pink. All right, so before I show you the class notes, I just want you to look up here for a moment. Look up here. Prepositions. All right, so with your, I tell you what, you can, do this with your pencil. I want you to put a rectangle around the word position. Position. Okay? Preposition. The key word for a preposition is the word position. It's position. Okay? All right, actually, let me. Yeah, let's do go to the notes first. Sorry about this. Yeah, let me go get to this. All right, so grab your pink. Yeah, let's do take a look at these notes first, and then we'll come back to the slide. All right. Just look at each other awkwardly while we wait for this to load up. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. Don't look awkward anymore. Here we go. All right. Here we go with the pink. All right. So two new vocabulary, can and may. And you think, oh, Mrs. Meese, can and may. What is this? Second grade. There is a time when you use can, and there is a time when you're supposed to use may. All right. Can means you're able to do something. May means you're permitted. Have you ever asked mom or dad, can I have a snack? And they say, I don't know. Can you? No. My dad is so <laughs> All right. So the reason you're going to blow 
mom and dad away. You're going to get it right from here on out. The reason they do that is because, can technically you are asking, am I able to do something? Am I able to have a snack? Or are you really asking, am I permitted? You're asking for their permission. That's when you use may. All right, grammar is picky. It's technical. All right, so that's what you'll need to make sure that you know the difference between those. All right, preposition. So with your pink, here's what you want to highlight. It shows the relationship between a noun or pronoun and another word, a preposition. It shows the relationship between a noun or pronoun and another word. And we've got these cute little bugs. Look at that. Oh, bugs. Aren't they sweet? And that's a straw there. All right. And what you can see are we've got a bug and we've got a straw. And that preposition is showing us the relationship between that bug and the straw. So bug number one is on the straw. On is a preposition. So I highlighted that in pink. You should too. Uh, bug number two, poor thing, is under the straw. He does not look happy. Squish. All right. Under is a preposition. Again, it is showing the relationship between the bug and the straw. Bug number three, where's bug number three? Inside the straw. Inside is another preposition. So highlight. I highlighted all these prepositions on these bugs here. Number four. Where is number four? Over the straw. He looks much happier than the one under the straw, doesn't he? He's like, woo -hoo. And number five. Where is he? Around the straw. Okay. So those prepositions highlighted in pink show you the relationship between those bugs and the straw. If it's over, if it's under, if it's around, inside, or on. All right? And you can see, boom, there are a lot of prepositions. No, you do not need to memorize this list. Okay? You do need to be familiar with this, and probably they look familiar to you, right? Um, some some things that you might want to make note of, not all of them are only one word. Do you see some prepositions up here that are like a phrase? Find one and call it out to me. Yeah, good. Keep going. In addition to? Yep, 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 yep. Okay, there you go. Okay, so not all of them are just one word. Some of them are more than one word, right? Yeah. All right, if we use, for example, um, and, well, and some of them maybe don't make sense with the bug and the straw either, do they? Find one that doesn't make sense with the bug and the straw and call it out to me. The bug in spite of the straw, right? That doesn't make sense. Owing to, good. What else doesn't make sense with the bug and the straw? <laughs> yeah. All right, so sometimes... It works to think about it. You've got these two nouns, and how are they related to each other? Sometimes, because it's grammar, it doesn't work so easy. All right? Now, let's take a look. Now, let me show you the other thing. All right, now prepositions. Um, the word here is position. So, on your notes right there on page 80, I want you to draw, if you haven't done so, a rectangle around that word preposition in both places, in the title and underneath the box, underneath the box, position, all right? Because prepositions, they are really telling you a noun's position with another noun. In the example in the book, right there underneath the box, we've got a bug and we've got a straw. So we've got these two nouns, what is their position to each other? That's what the preposition tells you. All right, we can do the same with a cloud and this airplane, right? All right, it can go over the cloud. It can fly under the cloud. What else can it do? Use a preposition that you see there. All right, it can fly next to the cloud. Where else? Through the cloud. It could. Where else? Around. around the cloud, yeah. Good. What else? 
Look at look at the examples. Find me another one. On, on the cloud. Behind. Behind the cloud. Alongside. Alongside the cloud. Right. Next to the cloud. In front of the cloud. Opposite. Opposite the cloud. Across. Across the cloud. Beneath the cloud. Yeah. All right. So just like the bug in the straws, or the bugs in the straw. All right. You can think about it: an airplane in a cloud. Right? A preposition will tell you the position of the airplane to the cloud. There are two nouns, all right, and that preposition is in the middle. All right, so let me write one of those down. I see. I'm oh, sorry, you erased. So the airplane in the cloud, um, tell me again one of the prepositions that works, one of those phrases you guys were just saying. Three. Tell it to me again. Three. All right, so through the cloud, right? What's another? Okay. Fantastic. Across the cloud, above the cloud. Okay, I'm going to use those. Okay. And again, just like with the bugs and the straw, not all of those prepositions will work with this. All right, most of them do, some of them don't. All right. Now, if you will, all right, look at page 81. 81. All right. So at the top of page 81, all right, so what we have here are simple prepositions. We call them simple because it's just one word, single word. It's a simple preposition, a single word. A ton of examples for you there, right? All right. Down in the middle. Let's make sure that we remember this. This, if you've got to get this. It will save you a lot of time when you're diagramming. All right, so get this little definition imprinted into your big, fat, beautiful brain right now. A person, place, or thing. That's a noun. All right, I wrote noun above that because that's what a person, place, or thing is. Always follows a preposition. Always. We call this the object of the preposition. All right? A noun always follows the preposition. We call that the object of the preposition. And you guys were telling me that, right? Right here. All right? So we assume for all of these, we're talking about the plane. The plane flies. All right, that would work with all of these prepositions. And in every single example, we have a preposition here, and we have an object of the preposition after it. All right, it's cloud every time, because those were the two nouns that we were relating to each other. Okay, the airplane and the cloud. That's why the object of the preposition is a cloud in all of these examples. Okay, it is the noun after the preposition. Okay, what about with the bugs and the straw? If you said, like, bug number one, the bug is on, or let's not say is, let's do an action. The bug sits on the straw. All right, so on is your preposition. What's the object of the preposition? Straw. It's the noun after the preposition. All right, that is super, super important. Do you have it in your brain? What do you call the noun after the preposition? Object of the preposition. All right, what do you call the noun after the preposition? What do you call the noun after the preposition? Object of the preposition. There we are, okay. There we are, all right. Very good. All right. Let's go to, let's, uh, yeah, let's go to the next page, 82. All right. So at the top of page 82, you also just need to remember that some prepositions are what we call complex. That just means there's more than one word. There's more than one word. These you probably are not as familiar with, 
All right, you might remember that from is a preposition, but apart from, aside from, away from, those are also prepositions. And you, you keep the preposition together. If it's two words, keep it together. If it's three words, keep it together. Don't separate it. All right? Sound good? Okay, I got a preposition video for you because it's, it's a cool video. I've been listening to it all morning. You'll love it. You'll love it. Let's break it up a little bit with a little, a little preposition video. Let me make sure. All right, no, anytime you click on a video from Schoology, you gotta do it twice. All right, I just clicked on it and it says, no, block. But if you click on it twice, it'll go to it. Just keep that in mind. Okay, class, who would like to do problem three on this the board? This is not it. This is not it. Please don't be me. Please. There we go. Preposition. It's your ambition. To tell me, tell me, tell me. Have you heard this? Exactly my position. I could be on the couch or outside my house. Am I across the street? Oh, within your reach, I could go up the stairs or fall off my chair. Am I in front of you? I leave behind it soon. it again it's on the website that's like the rockin'est preposition song ever right you didn't know prepositions could be so rockin all right very good uh okay so uh let's go back to the book page 83 page 83 83 83 you got your pink in hand and what I'd like for you to do is for the practice, I just want you to highlight those prepositions with your paint. Highlight them in the practice. They're in the middle. 
Let me see if I can get to them. Again. I just got to remember which where we are. Nope, not there. B yeah, B, C, D, and E. Don't do A. Don't have a contest. Don't have a preposition contest. All right, yeah. Do B, C, D, and E. Thank you for that clarification. All right, so page 83, right there in the middle, right there in the middle. Just highlight the prepositions. Look out for the ones that are more than one word. There's a few of them in there. Look out for those. And while you're at it, go ahead and answer F, G, H, and I. You can still use your pink if you want to. May or can. May or can. For F, G, H, and I. May or can. Can means do you have the ability to do it? May is you're asking permission. 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 We're just doing B, C, D, and E, F, G, and H. That's it. F, G, H, and I. 30 seconds we're going to go. We're going to talk about these together. Let's start back with Jacob in B. In B. Tell us what you highlighted the prepositions in B, Jacob. There's four. No. In addition to is one. In addition to, what's another one in there, Jacob? Must be. No, that's your verb. That's your verb. Of, and there's another of, and four. Those are your four prepositions in B. In addition to, of, of again, and four. All right, in C, in C, anybody, there's two in there. In is one, what's the other one? Because of, I know you have to get used to those ones that are two words, because of. Letter D, there's two. By means of, By means of yep, there's one. By means of, again, I know it takes some getting used to get those ones that are more than just one word. What's the second one? Into. Into, there it is. Letter E, there are four. What's the first one? On. On. After, in, what's the fourth one? In front of. Yeah, there it is. All right, F, which is it? Can or may? Can. G. May. May. H. May. May. I. Can. You guys are going to rock the prepositions homework. Very good. And you're going to have that tell me, tell me, tell me in your head all day. All right. Go to page 87, 87. Let's do 27 through 30 together. Let's make sure that we understand these verb phrases, these participles, preposition. It's all kind of like a little review here. All right, so here's our sentence. Um, let me see. Josh, will you read the sentence there that all of these questions are going to be based on, along with? 
along with the other investigators, had forced the foreign dogs to tell me all who they could find. Okay, that's this guy's great name. All right, so there's a verb phrase in there. What is the verb phrase in that sentence? Anybody? Has stumbled. Right, so number 27, you would go ahead and write it. Let me help you on your homework. Has stumbled. Right. So, what, which one is the helping verb and which one is the past participle? Has is the helping verb, so you would underline that. And the past participle is stumbled, and you would circle that. All right. What's the preposition in 28? There's only one. Oh, I'm sorry, there's there's two. Yeah. Along with is one. What's the second one? On to. Yeah, there's the two. Along with, there is the preposition, and on to. There's the second preposition. 29, which one of those is it? Interrogative. Interrogative. It asks a question. And number 30, go ahead and diagram it right there. Simple subject, simple predicate. All right, simple subject is what? Forest P. Corndog. Now see, your last name could be Corndog. That, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? I could be Mrs. Corndog, Miss Corndog. I don't even like Corndogs. Anybody like Corndogs? Yeah? I'm, I, I've had like one in my whole life. I don't know. They're just not my jam. Okay. What's the simple predicate here? Has Very good. Has stumbled. And again, it is a past participle because it has this right here. Has stumbled. Okay. All right. We got one more to do, and then we'll take a break. We'll talk about your writing. Got another video for you. All right. Turn to 88. The perfect tenses, perfect tenses, they're amazing, they're perfect, perfect tenses. What color do you need for this? Blue, Blue that's right, because it's verbs. All right, so we're going to start off with blue for the perfect tenses. All right, a moment for the vocabulary words, contemptible, contemptuous. So I added a couple of words that I think would be more familiar to you. The ones that I've highlighted in, in yellow, that is what will be on your test next week, your quiz. Okay? So contemptible means despicable, shameful. Remember despicable me? All right, you can think of Gru. Some of his actions were shameful before the girls came. All right, so that's contemptible, despicable, shameful. Contemptuous is scornful, hateful, prideful. So they are related, but they are just a tad different in what they mean, all right? So make sure you know what is in yellow, because I think the yellow defines it a little clearer for you. All right. The perfect tenses. Why are they so perfect? They are perfect because they are completed. They are done. All right? That is what perfect means. It doesn't mean it's perfect, it's flawless. It's perfect means it's completed, it's done, the action is over. It's perfect. All right? So we have a present perfect Past perfect, future perfect. Um, it says squish and squirt over there. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Just ignore squish and squirt over there. Except those are kind of fun verbs to say. Squish and squirt. You can say squish, squirt. It's kind of fun. I don't know. All right. All right. So let's talk about present perfect. Present perfect. Here it is. All right, present perfect 
again, we are in the have house. The have house. Woo, eraser. Here we go. Let's do the have house. All right. All of these perfect tenses are, they use a verb from the have house. All right, it's one of those three. All right, so present perfect will use has and have, and then the past tense. Write that in under present perfect. It will use has or have plus the past. Has or have plus the past. Right. And why is it perfect? What does perfect mean again? Action is complete, right, it's done. That's why it's in the past, all right? Past perfect, had in the past, okay? This is where you would use had in the have house, had and the past. And future perfect. Future perfect. Here we have will have or shall have and the past. It's will have or shall have and the past tense. Does anybody remember the difference? When do you use will? When do you use shall? There's two pronouns you use for shall. Call them out if you remember them. I, I and we. That's right. Good. All right, and you're thinking, well, Miss Meeks, that makes no sense. How can you be in the future and also in the past? Well, here's an example sentence for you right here. Okay. By the end of this book, we shall have discussed the entire Constitution. All right, so it's talking about a time in the future when you're finished with the action. I, I'm assuming so, based on your sentence, all right? How about, before Monday, he will have chosen his replacement. So that is talking about a time in the future when an action is completed, okay? I know, grammar is fun, isn't it? Yeah, all right? So let me show you, let's go back to this guy. Hang out there for a second. Let's go back to this guy. All right, so remember just a couple of lessons ago, an hour ago, from lesson 13, we talked about past time and past participle, past participle, remember? That was just a little while ago, all right? Those were the principal parts of a verb. There were four. Number three was the past time, and number four was a past participle. That's where you use have and a verb with ed. This is the same thing. It's the same thing. All right. This perfect, it means it's completed. The action is done. So to make the perfect tense, again, we are in the have house and a verb with ed, which is exactly the same as the past participle. So don't get that confused. They're the same. All right. We're just calling them a past participle here. And here we're calling it a perfect tense, but it's the same thing. All right? Not yet. Hold on. Let's go to, let's just practice these just a little, little bit. Look at page um, 89. Page 89. We're getting close. Ooh. Yeah, let's go here. All right. At the top of page 89 up there, all right, so we can find the present, past, or future perfect tense. All right, so we just look for the verb phrase. In letter A, the verb phrase had accepted, had accepted. So is that present, past, or future? Past. All right, letter B, will have spoken. Is that present, past, or future? Future. Letter C. Has appointed. 
present, past, or future? That's present. And letter D, shall have researched. Future. Yeah, that's future. Okay. I uh, look down at the bottom of page 89, close to the where the practice is. Let's just do A through C. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to do the same thing. You can highlight in blue or underline, find the verb phrase, and then tell me, is it present, past, or future? For A, B, and C, you're going to have an example of each, a present, a past, and a future. We'll do this, and then we'll take a little break. Just A, B, and C, they're on page, bottom of page 89, A, B, and C. What is the verb phrase? The first thing you tell me, second, is it present, past, or future? All right, letter A, what's the verb phrase? Everybody. Has provided, which is it? Is present, has provided. It has provided something. All right. Letter B. Had desired. Had desired. All right. Which one is that? Uh, past. That had lets you know it's past. All right. And then letter C. I shall, shall, have, shall have studied and it is future. future. There it is. You're going to have a lot of fun with homework this week. Yeah. All right. Close that up. Go take a break. Get yourself a drink of water. At least go walk to the elevator. Stretch. Be careful of the work. Yes, absolutely. We'll come back and we'll talk about your writing assignment. You do not have to write this down. Uh, let's do a quick review. If you have your windows to the world, open up to page 27. Josh, could you get that door, please? Thank you. Let's do a quick review about illusions. You've got a fun writing assignment. Fun. I always say that, and you're like, this is me. Do you even know what fun is? I understand. All right. So here's what I want. You do not have to write this down, but I do want us to do a little review of illusions. Anything you can remember about what we talked about last week with illusions? Anything at all? Just call them out. I'm going to make a little bubble map up here of, for a review. Call it out. Oh, page 27. AC. Um, it's like when you like give a, um, I can't think of the word. Never mind. <laughs> You say something about some another book or movie or okay. Uh, say something. Yeah. All right. So about a book or movie. All right. Someone else. It assumes the reader knows about it. Okay. Yeah. So you assume reader un 
understands, right? Okay, what else? Okay, so something famous and well known, right? Otherwise, I mean, if it's a family joke with your family, I might not understand what your illusion there is. All right, what else? Call them out. What else? What are some popular um, uh, genres for illusions, like topic areas? All right, so there are biblical, about Bible stories. What else? Greek and Roman mythology. Okay, mythology, good. Yes, that would also be this here, I think. Good. What else? Anything else about illusions from last week? It really could be. Yeah, it really could be. Um, it could be something that sounds very smart, like a book or a mythology or something from the Bible, but it could also just be, you know, when you make an allusion to a book or a movie or a song, right? Or a song, okay? Uh, very good. Do we hit? I think we got the gist of it there. Huh. All right. Um, one more. Tell me. I'm going to do this one in red. Tell me what is a theme? Now this we haven't talked about yet, but we're going to in just a few minutes. Um, what is theme based on other English instruction you have before? Yeah, Jacob. Essentially kind of like a topic that everything follows. Okay, yeah. topic, everything Category. follows. Good. What else? Okay, so you say category, say that again, please. Category would be like development. Okay, category for your writing. Okay, what else? When you think about a theme, what is that? I'm thinking of something a lot of people think of with theme. It's two words, an M and an I. Main idea. A main idea, yeah. Um, where does the theme come from originally? Who, who creates this? The author. Yeah, the writer, right? So the author, very good, creates it. If you're the one writing it, then you create what this theme is, right? All right, I've got a video for you. Let's look at this. It's in the folder for today so you can go back and look at it with the preposition video i know you will all right theme here's a little review for theme enjoy this movie and visit framepop.com for much more do you see star wars wait, wait so has anybody not seen star wars <laughs> Because this is in total allusion to Star Wars. If you are not familiar with that story, then you're going to be like, I have no idea what that allusion is. And that's the point, right? Um, it assumes the reader understands if, that I'm this person who created this assumes that you're familiar with Star Wars, so this will be entertaining as they are explaining theme to you. So there's an example of allusion right here. Let's go back. Here we go. I'll take the R2 unit. Come on, Moby, how many different takes do you need? No, I don't want to switch roles. Dear Tim and Moby, how do I figure out the theme of a story? And why is finding the theme so important anyway? From Bob A. Thanks for the questions, Bob. A theme is a central message or idea woven into the action of a story. Themes give a story meaning by linking the fictional world with our own. They comment on issues from our everyday lives and from the wider culture. They're a huge part of what makes films and literature so fascinating. 
If you've ever read a fable, you already know a simple type of theme. Fables always include a moral, a lesson about life. Take the tortoise and the hare. The hare is always bragging about how fast he is, so the tortoise challenges him to a race. I'm sorry for the Jar Jar reference. He's so friend. confident. He stops to take a nap halfway through. Slowly but surely, the tortoise passes the hare and wins. It might seem like the story is all about speed and running. The larger message is that patience and determination pay off. The race is used to communicate a lesson that can be applied to real life. Themes are usually more subtle in movies and novels. It's easy to be wowed by spaceships, aliens, and princesses, and those are essential parts of the Star Wars story. But to find the themes, we have to read between the lines. Well, not literally. We have to look for patterns or ideas that come up frequently. The repetition of a word or phrase is a good sign you're onto a theme. We call those recurring words or images motifs. The Force is one big motif in Star Wars. We learn more about its symbolic meaning each time it's mentioned. Well, like at the beginning, the Force seems to be just a magical power. But over the course of the series, we learn that it's much more than that. It's a universal energy that connects all living things, and a spiritual balance between light and darkness. Themes are often set up as pairs of opposing ideas, like with the Force. At its most basic level, it represents the struggle between good and evil, but it's also about nature versus technology, the tension between instinct and logic, or the choice between freedom and destiny. And they sound complicated, but those themes are all right there in the movie. We find them by analyzing the story elements. For example, we can examine lines of dialogue, what the characters say. Like when Darth Vader calls the Death Star a technological terror. Then he says the colossal weapon is nothing compared to the power of the Force. His comments set up technology and nature as opposing ideas. Plot, the action in a story, is another great place to hunt for themes. Okay, Moby Wan, I will use the Force. I will trust my intuition. We did it, R2. We destroyed the Death Star. Right, Luke is successful because he relies on the Force. His natural instincts are victorious over destructive technology. Well, in a great story, all the elements work together to support the themes. Look at the settings in Star Wars, where the action takes place. The Death Star is massive and spotless. Like a lot of advanced technology, it feels sinister and cold. Compare that with the Rebels' ships. They look and feel lived in, like a home. Even the costumes support that contrast. Stormtroopers wear masks, and their uniforms are totally rigid. They look more like machines than people. Compare that to the rebel outfits, what we good guys wear. Our clothing is loose, comfy, and made of organic materials. Well, appearance is a key part of characterization. That's all the ways a character is portrayed, how he looks, speaks, thinks, and acts. Remember when we first meet Mobiwan? He lives a simple life, not surrounded by gizmos and gadgets. He's a respected Jedi Master, but unlike the bad guys, he's humble and has a sense of humor. Yeah, those themes really resonate in today's high-tech world. Anyway, let's get this place cleaned up. Dad's gonna be home soon. What? You are my father? No! No! Visit us at brainpop.com okay. for more on this topic and hundreds of others. You'll find movies, games. Okay, so what can we add to our little bubble map there on theme based on the video? What can we add? It's like two opposing 
Okay, so often the theme, you can see it better because of two opposing opposites, maybe um, two uh, forces, it could be characters, blah, 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 right? So you can see the theme because of two opposite things happening in the story. Yeah, what else? Okay, yeah. Actions. Yes, good. I'm going to highlight that right here. What else did you learn that we can add to theme? How do you know what the theme is? You can look at dialogue. Okay, so look at what characters say. Right, so dialogue contributes to theme. What else? Setting. He called, um, it begins with an M, words that are repeated, ideas that are repeated in a certain story or selection. What, do you remember what that was called? M, O, not morals, but the moral could be the theme. Sometimes that happens, like with the fable. Um, T, what is motif, very close, motif. All right, so those are repeated ideas. All right, if you're looking for what is the theme, look at what is being repeated. All right, if it's a certain idea or if it's certain words, um, often that will tell you what the theme is. Okay? Um, and what illusions... We're in this little video to Star Wars. Call them out. Let's hear them. Music. The music. Yep. Luke. Luke and I am your father right there at the end. Yep. If you haven't seen the, the Empire Strikes Back, then you're like, what is the... Yes, that was, that's what Star Wars people would say. All right. What else? What other illusions did you notice? Lights. The lightsabers. What else? Crossbows. Yep. The crossbows. The ships, the Death Star, there were a lot of allusions to the to Star Wars, the, the series in there, right? All right, let's talk about your next writing project. All right, if you have your binder, you should go ahead and clip this guy in. This is writing homework. Writing homework. Writing homework. Clip this guy in. Don't let him get away. All right. Writing homework. I'll give you a second. Clip it in. Let's talk about it. So just to remind you, you've got a writing notes section in your binder, correct? And writing homework. All right, so this goes in writing homework. All right, and the theme, if you want to watch that movie again, it's, on the, it's in the folder right here, theme and the preposition. All right. All right, so... For homework, you have your grammar, of course, yay, all right, and then in the windows to the world, if you'll turn to page 10, there's a story, The Gift of the Magi. It's a short story. It's not very long, all right, here it is, page 10 to 13, all right. Zoe, anybody else besides Zoe familiar with this story? The Gift of the Magi. All right, so what does that sound like? Just think of the title. That's just the title itself. Here, The Gift of the Magi. Um, what does that remind you of, if anything? Jesus. Why does that remind you of, of Jesus? Because they bring like a present. So. All right, so is that an illusion? Yeah. Yes. All right, so the Magi were the wise men that brought the gifts 
What were the gifts they brought? Anybody remember? The gold, the Franken, not the Frankenstein, the frankincense, and the myrrh. All right. So the Magi brought gifts to Jesus. Um, what kind of gifts were those? Treasures, right? They were expensive, costly. Um, they were treasures. All right, they were like the best gifts that they could bring to Jesus. They were gifts for a king is what they were. They were gifts that you would give to a king. All right, so it is an illusion, isn't it? The gift of the Magi, just the title, now you know, oh, this might have something to do with gifts and costly treasured gifts, okay? So you'll be on the lookout for that. So you'll read this story first, right here in the book. And if you need to go back and look at the theme video again to remind yourself what it is, please do. And then you have two paragraphs that you're going to write. All right? Two paragraphs. One is on the theme. And one is the illusion, the gift of the magi. All right? And I've told you exactly in this checklist what you need to include in your paragraph. So these paragraphs might sound different than the intro paragraphs that we have been writing. You're still going to have an intro sentence. And I've told you right here, for the intro sentence, you have to use one of those five we've been talking about. And if you have that fish and hook paper still in your binder, fantastic. Use that, but I, I did also include in the folder the hook your reader. If you can't find that, it was these. All right, that's in the folder. So you've got to use one of these to open both paragraphs, but after that, they actually sound very different than the intro. You're not going to have three reasons this time. All right, but I've told you exactly what I do want you to do um, with the checklist, okay? So, for example, let's go back to the theme. So, after you read the story, you'll think about what do you think the theme of that story was, all right? And then you'll use this checklist. Make sure that you've included each of those elements in your one paragraph. Um, you're going to summarize what theme means, then make sure you include the main characters in your paragraph, and provide two examples from the story that show the theme. Um, make sure you explain them. All right, don't just tell me what they are. Explain how that shows the theme. And then your last sentence is going to be your opinion of how that... Um, uh, about how, wait, what, your summary statement of your opinion as it relates to the theme of what the gift of the Magi is all about. Six sentences, tight. All right, so that's your paragraph about theme. All right, and then you write one more about illusion. All right, again, use the fish and the hook. Hook, hook me in. I'm your reader. Hook me in. Use one of those intro sentences and now your focus is on illusion you're going to tell me what it means um, you're going to provide an example from your own all right so pretend that i know nothing about an illusion i want you to tell me what it means and give me an example of your own then i want you to tell me an example from the story and then the last thing Tell me how that illusion adds to the story. Why does the author choose to use that? Okay, what does it do? Six sentences and type. Okay? If you have any questions about this, just shoot me an email or a text. Uh, when is this writing assignment due? Monday. Monday. You can always turn it in before then, but I have to have it by Monday. All right? Um, you can put both paragraphs on the same page. Most of you do that. Some of you still put it on different pages, but you can keep them on the same 
I don't need the checklist. All I need are the paragraphs. The checklist is for you. All right. Print this guy out. Make sure that you've got all of those elements. This is what I'm using to grade your paragraphs. All right. So I'm going to be checking through your paragraphs. So you do it too. Okay. Look at that. We got one minute to spare. One minute to spare. Terrific job in class today. Good luck with your homework this week. Let me know if you ever run into any questions. I promise I'll get back to you quick. And check out the homework folder. Um, on your way out, on your way out, one more thing I want to make sure you guys know is here. The green folder, have you found the vocabulary words on Quizlet? The green folder right here. You have to click this guy three times. Three times, and then it will take you to Quizlet, where I have created the flashcards you guys can use to study the vocabulary. Um, I'll get 13, 14, and 15 up, but you just click here, click on the set. There are some really fun games Quizlet has here on the left side to help you learn what these flashcards are. All right, they're all listed for you down here. Quizlet will read them out loud to you. All right, you can play games to learn them. Take advantage of it. All right? You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being such a good class. Oh, so that is her comment. She annotated the search. I'm going to make a, oh, thank you for saying that. I'll put that in the email. She annotated and made comments as she read it, the author did. You don't have to do that, though. Um, I'm so glad you mentioned that.